All right, we're now joined by, from New York, by Akwe Bonamalwal, South Sudan's permanent representative to the United Nations. Mr. Ambassador, thank you very much for joining us here on TRT World. Now, my question to you is, will you let in the 4,000 peacekeeping troops that have been approved by this UN resolution? Uh, first of all, thank you very much for uh, having me. Uh, we, as you just announced, uh, the resolution was adopted, but uh, we have rejected it because we were not consulted. And uh, we, would, we would have liked for the uh, Security Council for there to be a consultation between the government of uh, South Sudan and the Security Council so we could agree on the modalities on, of how these forces can come in and what would be their mandate and for how long. However, that did not happen. And uh, so our position is that it can, uh, without our consent, I think it's, uh, this would be a, a risky venture, and so we are still hopeful that if they are actually willing to listen to the government of South Sudan, we could sit together and try to work out. In principle, the government has accepted you know, the protection force, so it's not the, we are not just saying don't come, but we, we want to be part and partners of this uh, protection force so that we can allow them with our consent. Mr. Ambassador, what do you mean by risky venture? Well, I mean, if, you, uh, if, if it's being imposed, uh, that's uh, now uh, the government will not take responsibility or it will not really, some elements in the government may not cooperate. Uh, the I.O. might not cooperate and might do other things that we are not responsible for, and then the government would be responsible and will be blamed for it. That's why we wanted actually to be partners in this uh, uh, resolution rather than uh, for us to be on the other side of it. And that's what I meant. Who would take responsibility in case things uh, don't go well? Okay. Uh, now, in the past three years, uh, tens of thousands of, of people have been killed in your country and more than uh, two million people have been displaced. So what's it going to take to stop all this? Well, you know, the struggle is a political struggle. I think what is needed is more patience, even though you have cited uh, some numbers that it can be disputed. But nevertheless, yes, there have been suffering for the last two years. But what needs to be done is not for a resolution that is imposed on the government or on the people of South Sudan. I think the international community should have uh, patience in facilitating the South Sudanese to sit down and try to resolve their issues without any uh, outside uh, pressure or undue influence on the process. There shouldn't be a prejudged agenda on how uh, the, the problem of South Sudan should be resolved. It should come, up, should come as a result of a negotiated uh, settlement, political settlement. It's not a military force. It's not an imposed uh, solution from outside. You talked about this political struggle or political settlement uh, between, and you're obviously referring to uh, the one between President Salva Kiir and Eric Machar. Now, they signed a peace agreement last year. Why didn't the agreement work out? Well, it didn't work out because actually the peace is not a perfect one and it was signed under duress. But there are, uh, uh, and, and this was discussed in Addis, and we have actually brought this to the attention of the mediators, to the attention of the region leaders, that you cannot really have two opposing forces that have been fighting uh, for the last two years, and you expect them to come and play uh, and work together in, uh, within a month or so. And uh, what we wanted was that for there to be one government, so time could have been taken for a way to make a security arrangement that will actually integrate the forces uh, through a negotiated time before actually you are uh, lumping them together. So that's one of the aspects of actually why the, uh, the crisis uh, erupted again in July. Uh, secondly also, 
the, the formation of the government of uh, national unity, when you have all these elements in that government, and they are, some are counting on the international community to pressure the, uh, the government to fight their war. So actually, we were at a stalemate. The government was not uh, moving forward, was not functioning, because everybody was waiting, thinking that it is the president that is ultimately going to be blamed. And sure enough, that's what we, we see happening now, because uh, the July fight that happened, it's interrupted by the IAO, who actually started shooting the, uh, the guards, the palace guards. And you haven't seen anybody up to now giving the president the credit that he deserves for protection, for protecting the, uh, the leader of the IO, Dr. Ryang Machar. What we hear is that it's a condemnation and, uh, and threats of sanction, which actually is not helpful. All right. Ambassador Malwal, thank you very much for your time. I appreciate it.